Hey everybody, welcome here. We're just starting a couple of minutes before the hour, allowing people to come on board for this video. So if you're seeing this video at some time in the future, wherever you might be, I'm Michael Goldsman, and this is being originally recorded as a live video in my Facebook group called You Are The Answer, which you're all welcome to join if you have not joined it yet. Um, and this topic today is on spiritual entities and attachments, what they are, how we get them, and what to do about them. There will be some um, amount of live clearing work included with today's uh, event as well. So stay tuned for that. You're going to probably feel it um, even as we are moving through the, the uh, video itself, um, just because the field that's being created for this video is already really strong. So I will say, I know some of you are going to be coming on board in the next couple of minutes, but I will say as we get started here that um, if you are not wanting any degree of energetic clearing, um, then this might not be the right video for you, right event for you. Sometimes when we're talking about entities, if this issue has been a chronic condition for some of you, um, then individual work, individual counseling, clearing work may be more the way to go because sometimes um, this kind of broader clearing work done in a video like we're doing today can begin to kind of take out the roots of the condition and that can cause a little bit of disruption. Um, it can cause sometimes the symptoms become exacerbated temporarily depending on your readiness and awareness um, around the issue. So I just, I'm just putting that out there now so that um, if you have any concerns about watching this video, please uh, err on the side of caution and just maybe email me to see what would be the best best idea for you. So welcome everybody as we're all getting together on this beautiful, it's being recorded on a Sunday morning. It's very rainy here where we are today, which is better than better than snow, I suppose, for a February day. And just I just invite you all as we're coming together today to just um, get settled in, to get relaxed. I'm going to be talking for a bit. It's not, seemingly not very difficult for me to do, <laughs> off the cuff. No pre-planned script, though I have a few ideas of what I want to talk about. Um, so I'm going to be talking for a little bit, and there might be some really valuable information um, coming through today. I want to say that um, this kind of information is um, not widely understood, it seems, in a lot of um, spiritual clearing circles by a lot of individuals who are really on a path. People don't understand this particular issue, what it is, why it seems to bother some people more than others. So we're going to get into that. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. This is really super cool. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to ask if you have questions, if you may save them for later when I open it up for questions. And if you're commenting live on uh, this video, I may lose your question in the mix uh, and not be able to see it again. So um, when I ask for questions, if you have them later on, then um, please please post them then. It's cool technology we've got going on here. So welcome, everybody. We're just about just about the top of the hour here. I'm just asking for a little bit of um, basic clearing of what I'm calling just the energetic space that we're working in here. So you might already begin feeling that. So again, I'm just encouraging those of you who are just joining us to Get settled in, get comfortable, relax, um, and just enjoy. I'm just going to check a bit here what's going on in our group as we get started. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm just relaxing in everybody. Awesome. Awesome. Great. I'm seeing a couple of comments here. But I'm not looking at a ton of comments quite yet. So I am seeing everybody joining us though, which is really super cool. So we're going to get started here. So this topic is an interesting topic that I have really um, looked at from many different angles over the course of, of really years and probably one to two decades. This topic of what we call spiritual entities and attachments. Actually, let me stop this <laughs> clearing work that we're doing right here so we can get into just, uh, you can all hear what I'm saying. 
This issue is um, unknown to many people, and it's maybe all too known to some people. It depends on a person's individual background, their sensitivity level, um, and a whole host of other reasons I'm going to talk about as to why someone may be having this issue. What I'm basically talking about here is non-physical energy of some kind. They could be beings, non-physical beings. They could be um, even other types of what you might not call personified energies. They might just be a sense of heaviness or a kind of a, a collective energy of, of fear or anxiety or worry or these types of energies that basically seem to be distinct. They're distinct from our own being, our own soul. And yet, for various people, and even chronically for some people, they can what we call attach in. They can kind of be riding into the energy field of the individual, and this can cause all kinds of challenges. Um, I have found in my work, um, because this is always the first thing that we attempt to deal with in any given clearing session, I found that in my work that pretty much everyone at some point, even chronically on their journey, has these issues going on to some degree. Now, they don't really feel um, full on for most people. They don't really feel super serious. Um, they may just, people may not be at all aware that this is uh, a factor in their experience. So, a lot of these energies that are discordant attachments have more or less mildly discordant effects, or they have effects that may seem to be going along with um, what we are generally experiencing on a day-to-day -day basis in life. If we're experiencing limitation in some way, um, we, you know, we believe that we have a family program uh, we've inherited for, for fearing certain things or having certain challenges and limitations in life, we may also be uh, having these energetic attachments working with us that are kind of at that same vibration, that same limitation wavelength. So for most people, it, it, they're not aware necessarily that this is happening. They may only be aware that they're feeling some sense of, you know, um, limitation, possibly discordant thinking going on with them, maybe discordant emotional states chronically. And they might associate this with just, this is just who I am. This is the way I've always been. This is what I learned from my parents, all these types of things. And to some extent, these issues are part of our own consciousness. Um, they're emanations or expressions of our own consciousness. For some people, the issue seems more pronounced. What they're attracting in terms of entities or attachments seems much more overwhelming. We think of some examples of this that you might see in like a Hollywood type of situation. It's very, very rare that this kind of energy is at that level of, a, of extreme. But some people that I'm even in contact with report really challenging chronic issues that they are aware of with these types of energies. So what do we make of all of this and what do we do about it? I think a lot of my perspective on this comes down to a couple of basic spiritual principles and a couple of basic ideas about how life works, about how our consciousness works, about how that these laws of attraction and radiance really work. I want to start off by saying that there is only one power. And this may sound like, well, what is he talking about? What does this have to do with entities? How you view ultimate reality and life and spirit has a lot to do with how relatively free you can become from these issues. So I want to start off by saying there's one power. What I mean by that is that there's one ultimate power of creativity, of life. We, many of us call that God. Many of us call that spirit. We might call it source. We might call it consciousness or being. There's only one power. And this is the beginning point of really all spiritual healing, in my opinion. How is this different than what many people believe, or consciously or unconsciously? Well, many people believe that there is an ultimate good power and there's an ultimate evil power. And that's, so there's two powers. And that these powers are ultimately constantly in battle with each other and they're constantly fighting each other. 
people may not say that they believe it explicitly quite that way, but many people approach healing as if there are two powers, that they're both in battle with each other and that one of them has to ultimately win. Many approaches to healing disease, for instance, or healing relationship issues, or healing any type of problem or challenge you have in life, um, often the, the basis of the approach for many people is unconsciously based in the idea that I have to fight a condition, I have to you have the power of good fighting this negative or evil condition in my life. And there are many spiritual teachers that actually teach this. Um, people teach that there's an ultimate good power, there's an ultimate evil power, that you know maybe long term the ultimate good ends up winning, but they're both kind of equivalent and they're kind of fighting things out. So you might say to me, okay, Michael, well, that seems to be obviously the case because there seems to be this kind of sort of more positive and more negative energy going on in life, in many different situations in life. You know, if I get a disease, then my body has to fight against the disease. Isn't that just the way things work? And I would say that through, um, through meditation, through prayer, through silence, you can begin to come into the realization that there is actually only this infinite presence of love, this presence of spirit. And that in the world of experience, in the, what we call the relative field of experience, there are seemingly conflicting powers. There seems to be some stuff that is negative, some stuff that's positive, some stuff that's you know, battling it out. Um, there seem to be good people, bad people, good conditions, bad conditions. This is natural because how we're looking at life from our current perspective is, is based in the idea of duality. It's based in the idea of having experiences that are contrasting. Most spiritual teachings ultimately say that being here in this physical body is all about learning through contrast. But what I'm saying with that, though, is that even while we're learning through contrasting experience... Some stuff seems to be good, bad, there's hot, there's cold, there's polarity here on the earth. That if we dig beneath that, eventually we come to a point where we can really say for certainty that there is only one, there is only one power, there's only one presence, there's only one life. That's the life of spirit. So I'm saying these things because, um, first of all, I don't encourage you to take my word for that per se. Um, I have had this knowing develop in my own consciousness as a deep inner knowing over the course of the last couple of years. I've heard it said before, people have different opinions about it, they think there's an ultimate God, an ultimate devil fighting each, fighting each other out. I've come to realize that this is not the case, that there is just this one presence, and I encourage you to seek out the realization of that in meditation. Why? What does this have to do with our topic today, you might be asking? Because you, when you know your oneness with spirit, you are capable of becoming free of any seemingly discordant condition, whether it's an entity, whether it's lack or limitation, whether it's any type of health challenge in life. But you have to realize that you do not need to fight the condition. This has a lot to do with uh, entities, even people who've written books. I was reviewing a book recently on entity attachments and, and such. And the person in Psychic Attack, for instance, and the person in the book was saying, well, you know, rarely do we have to go and also like curse and do damage to the person who has, you know, attacked us. If we know who the person is, the person who is casting these spells or whatever they're doing to us. Rarely do we have to do that. But in some cases we have to do that. And I'm like, okay, I'm done with this book because the book does not understand who we are in the power of spirit that um, nothing can ultimately get power over us except to the extent to which we are giving our power to that condition this is true whether it's talking about entities or whether we're talking about uh, lack limitation poverty disease the sooner we can begin to take our energy out of the consciousness of fighting the problem, fighting the condition, the sooner we can become free. 
So yes, I'm encouraging, if this is ever an issue for you that you're aware of, maybe it's a challenging issue, a chronic issue for you, the first thing to do is to, is to begin to practice so you can come back into a space of realizing the truth of who you are in spirit. Because that power um, dissolves all seeming conditions. It's one reason why, uh, talking about the same issue that Jesus spoke in the New Testament, and said that if you see a spirit, you know, he was telling his disciples, if you see a spirit attached to someone, basically, to not engage with the spirit. He was saying, don't talk about it. Don't uh, try to reason with it. Basically paraphrasing here, he said, you need to just be strong in the light of who you really are. And from that strength of your own inner knowing, you can just say, go. As he would often say, as is quoted of him, you just have to say, go, clear, release. That's all you have to do. There's no, there's no efforting, there's no fighting whatsoever. Because remember, the power of spirit is the only true power there is. Every other discordant seeming power that might be affecting us does not ultimately have any power or authority over us. Now, here's the trick. Is that many people... Uh, for instance, just in my experience, who come to me with knowing chronic issues around this type of thing, entities, soul attachments, for instance. They are looking for someone like me, um, or even like many of you who are also healers, are looking for someone to kind of fix the problem. But they may not realize that in spirit, they actually do not have a problem at all, that all they need to really do is to begin to realize within themselves, their oneness with spirit. And as they realize that, the problem begins to dissolve on its own. Now, how does that play out practically? Because this is really the basis of all healing, by the way. The, the idea here is that people with these issues, or with especially chronically or severely with these issues, are often losing power in some way to some condition, to some situation, they're losing power to their own sense of victimization, to their own sense of anger, to their own sense of hatred, to their own sense of um, believing that someone has seriously hurt them in a previous time. These are causing what we call energetic leakages in the person. They're causing a kind of a loss of power to the individual. And this is often not conscious to the person. If I talk about it now, a person might say, no, there's nothing going on in my life. It's not a big deal, but I just have had this, this particular issue going on. Through spiritual research, we can begin to uncover the exact nature of the challenge happening, and we can begin to discover why the particular challenge is happening. Remember, the reason why this is important is because ultimately nothing in life is happening to us that is somehow outside of our own consciousness. I'm not saying it's necessarily outside of our own desires or our present moment wants, or what is in our conscious mind at the moment. Of course, anyone with these chronic issues would not would say consciously, I don't want this issue to happen. I don't want this issue to continue. Um, people come in, for instance, working on money issues, often say, of course, they don't want the issue to continue. There's no lack of wanting in the world of spiritual healing. Everyone wants, even in, not in the world of spiritual healing, everyone wants greater good in their lives. The, the trick is to figure out how are we compromised? How are we losing power? Well, how is our consciousness not actually aligned with what we say we are wanting? That's the key. Take a deep breath on that. I'm giving you the key here to really all spiritual healing and growth. How is our consciousness in its fullest sense, is the subconscious and our present moment consciousness and our body consciousness, our, our emotional consciousness, our mental consciousness, how are all of these parts of our being aligned or not aligned with what it is that we say we're really wanting. And I would say that if you are not experiencing life, this is a, a little bit broader than just the entity issue, if you're not experiencing life in the way that feels highest and best for you, that feels most aligned with what it is that you're wanting, um, there is something within us that is still being withheld, that is being misaligned, that it hasn't been cleared, hasn't been resolved yet. And so as we begin to look to ourselves to find where is the root of this issue in myself, we can begin to clear. 
I'm telling you that if someone is really ready to have their entities cleared and resolved, there cannot be anything, there's no easier task on the earth than to say, Spirit, please clear. That's it. That's all it takes. That's what Jesus did. Remember, Jesus was also coming from a place of knowing his oneness with Spirit. So when someone's, when a practitioner like myself or like many of you are coming to someone with this kind of issue, if you're clear, if you're aligned in your own being, there doesn't need to be any efforting, there doesn't need to be any negotiation, there doesn't need to be any really, really any technique involved other than just simply you express the intention. And then if it is not done unto that person, if the person does not receive that clearing, again, you cannot be responsible for what someone else receives because that's ultimately up to them. What are they really open and available to? If the person does not receive a healing at that moment, then it's time to dig a little bit deeper. And for me, digging deeper often means what is really going on behind the surface of this person's awareness that is causing them to have a condition that is discordant from what they say they're wanting. Right? So, as I've said in previous videos, just to give you the gist of how consciousness is creative, it has the ability to, to align with our connection to spirit or has the ability to hide that connection with spirit. Anything that we have set in motion in the past, including an hour ago or including a day ago or a lifetime ago or whatever it is, anything that we have set in motion that we have not yet resolved is still part of our programming. It's still like a computer. Type the program into the computer. The computer just outputs what you tell the computer to do without a judgment. Same thing is true of our own consciousness. So as I begin to ask these issues to people, here's my procedure for talking about entities. Again, we start each clearing session with this kind of work anyway. For most people, um, the, issue, it, the issue, at least at that moment, is completely taken care of um, for that moment. Now, there may be other types of entities that come up over time. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So that this kind of work is important to do regularly, I think, for each of us. Um, many of us, as we learn some of these techniques of alignment and clearing and, and looking at our own consciousness, can begin to do this work more and more for ourselves. But when someone comes and they haven't experienced a release, or they've been struggling with it, they've been going to healer after healer, and I see this many times. People tell me, well, I'm just looking for the person who's going to fix me from this issue. That's the first red flag right there. Because there can be nobody who fixes us of anything. We don't really need fixing. We need to, uh, if, if anyone is going to be able to aid us, a teacher or a book or a technique or a practitioner of some kind, they're only going to be able to work within what we're willing and ready to deal with. So the next question beyond the level of, okay, you have some energetic attachments that are, are discordant. Um, and we don't know, just by asking for them to be released, we don't really know uh, why, initially, why your soul may not be doing this. So let's look at some other issues. The other issues coming up are um, that the person has not yet released a chronic sense of um, past repressed energies, for instance, that they have been victimized in some way. Now, victim consciousness is a huge, huge category. As a matter of fact, whether we would identify ourselves as being in that level of consciousness or not, um, the vast, vast majority of whatever I work with in clearing work is actually, could be contained in the category of victim consciousness. This is a large category which simply comes from the belief that life is happening to me. Um, that person over there made me angry. That person over there makes me feel bad. Um, that situation is causing me anxiety. Um, I can't do anything about it because my parents said these things to me. These are all expressions of victim consciousness. Now, some of you might be irked by me saying that. I'm not dismissing that these types of things can have an effect on us or, or that they happened. I'm not dismissing that at all. What I'm simply saying, though, is that if they happen to us and we continue to carry them for any longer than, you know, a few hours, hopefully, after they've happened, 
it is our, it, it's because we're choosing not to release them. It's because we're choosing to identify and take on that energy, say, oh, this is really happening. We begin to identify with being a victim of someone else's consciousness. Now, this issue is what has created the vast majority, if not all, human problems. As that develops over the course of lifetime after lifetime, it begins to enter into our lineages, it begins to then enter into our families, into our cultures, we begin having entire institutions in life that are based in victim consciousness, based on the idea that something is happening to you and you don't have any power in this situation. It becomes a chronic cycle of belief within us. Just even reflecting on that right now, is there any situation in your life where you're saying, for instance, um, I can't do this because of whatever, fill in the blank, because of the economy, because of my employer, because of my body, because of my lineage, because of my parents, because of whatever, um, because of God. A lot of people subconsciously are blaming God uh, a lot, have tremendous hatred at God. I'm trying all these spiritual techniques and yet God doesn't seem to be blessing me. God doesn't seem to be giving me the things I'm looking for. These may be going around in our subconscious. All of us, by the way, all of us have this to some degree. And the purpose of spiritual evolutionary work is to begin to take ourselves out of the belief that life is happening to us and that we are a victim of anything and to take us into the next stage of evolution, which is the, the sense that we have power to begin to influence and to change our lives. That's, that switch from I can't do anything because of them to I have the power to change at least my attitude to the situation or I have the power to leave or change the situation myself, or I have the power to tap into my inner resources in such a way that I can really manifest a different outcome in this situation. That is an incredibly different approach and different attitude. Most spiritual healing and clearing work is trying to move people between those two phases of evolution, from victim phase to empowerment phase. Why don't you just take a look for a moment, just inwardly, in your life right now, um, even in the past, and seeing, have I been making other people responsible for my feelings, for my limitations, for my outcomes? I'll guarantee that all of us, myself included, have done this probably even chronically, even most of the time for uh, larger chunks of our life. We might be really pulling out of that now. That's why you're attracted to a video like this. But um, being frank with ourselves about that. Now, when, it's, when I bring that up to someone who's having a chronic entity issue, um, what I often find is that the person is not really willing to look at that yet. And we begin to see very quickly why they're having this chronic issue. Because to the extent to which we're giving over our power to a person, to a past event, or to a situation through unforgiveness, unwillingness, to take our own current energetic responsibility. Okay, you know what? That person really, really betrayed me five years. Here's an example. Here's that person really betrayed me five years ago. I'm not going to deny the event happened. I'm not going to pretend it didn't happen. I'm not going to just sort of pretend I wasn't angry about that. I'm not necessarily going to um, pretend that the person shouldn't be accountable for that. If there's some way that they need to be accountable, if they're still in my life now, I'm not going to pretend that that's not important. At the same time, I have to be responsible for my own consciousness. In order for me to be able to manifest what I'm wanting to manifest in life, whether it's a health issue, whether it's a romantic relationship, a friendship, business contacts, whether it's a new level in uh, our soul's purpose, maybe in terms of career or in terms of getting in touch with our gifts, every area of healing, every area of manifestation has one requirement to it to be successful at it, is that we have to own our own consciousness. All of our excuses about how that person over there did it, all of our areas of blame, ultimately are only shooting ourselves in the foot. You know, people say that it doesn't really affect the other person when you're having holding on forgiveness or hatred or blame or still, in, still holding out the hope that that person is going to suffer for what they did to us 10 years ago, 20 years ago, or subconsciously 20 lifetimes ago. We are contracting and hurting our own energy. Now, I would say probably psychically we're also hurting the other person, 
but only to the degree to which they're they're um, willing to receive that discord energy from us. But most of, most of that discord energy is really affecting us. It's preventing us from being able to heal. It's preventing us from being able to manifest. So for some people, that can come across as chronic disempowerment to an entity, for instance. Now, I look at entities as many ways as, as we look at people in the physical world. You know, as much as we do not like this, people who are in a constant state of anger tend to attract people in situations that confirm that anger for them, make them angry, or the other people in the situation are also going to be angry or we're going to be angering them. People who are in a chronic state of fear, anxiety, worry, often attract situations or create situations or radiate situations and people in that like sense, that like ebb. As much as we would like to do that to not be the case, that absolutely is the case. It's not punishment coming from God. It's not, um, you're not doing anything ultimately wrong. Remember, we're here on the earth in order to learn how to master our own consciousness. It's only through getting this constant feedback about what is going on in our being that we would attract and create a certain situation that we can actually begin to learn and grow. So most people on the path at some point become willing to hear that, become willing to say, okay, you know what, without blame of myself, but with responsibility, I'm going to begin to look within and say, how am I responsible for this situation? Whether it's a physical person in our life, or whether it's a non-physical person or being in our life, the, the, the answers are really the same. So the second reason, which is very related to the first reason, is unfinished emotional business. And living, um, and it can also be related to trauma. Um, trauma is not something that everyone admits or would use that phrase to describe anything that they're consciously aware of. I would say probably without exception, all of us have experienced trauma, um, and all of us have been participant in trauma to, at some level of our soul's history, whether that's something in our conscious memory now, or whether it's something from a past lifetime. All of us, and again, trauma is just simply the energy of very, very strongly painful circumstances where often the individual consciousness is not able to really deal with the situation consciously when it happens, and so there's a lot of repression of energy that goes into the body, into the subconscious, into the cellular memories at that point. And that can begin to, I have found it oftentimes, that can begin to create this attraction to um, like-minded discordant energy. This is confusing for some people because they may not recall. First of all, trauma can often be repressed to such a degree that someone will not remember, or they will not, they have rationalized the situation that may have happened in childhood, may have happened earlier, and they thought, oh no, that wasn't a big deal. But they haven't necessarily done all of the healing that is needed in that circumstance. And that repressed energy, we use the phrase sometimes in our society, my inner demons. You ever hear that phrase? My inner demons. It's an interesting phrase. What does that mean? It means the stuff that's just like torturing me from within, the stuff that's unprocessed, the stuff that's really deeply held. That stuff can begin to attract or manifest or call into ourselves discordant energies that are in the spiritual realms. And the spiritual realms are filled with huge numbers of beings. And the beings are of various types and levels of consciousness, just like we have here on the earth. Um, many beings on the other side are not particularly highly evolved and conscious, but then we also have these beautiful high vibration beings, these masters and angels and, and other uh, higher vibration spirits on the other side that are also there. So again, law of radiance, law of attraction, what we are, not necessarily what we want, we are creating and attracting in life. So we have to look at, we have to be willing to look at um, unfinished, strong emotional business, including trauma. The trauma may not always be conscious to I may not have labeled it that way either. Some people, when I say that to them, they're like, oh yeah, okay, I get that. But many times people um, have not seen circumstances in their lives that they would describe that way. They may have rationalized it, or this may be a past life issue. Um, so losing power, this is related to what I've been saying already, losing power to situations, relationships, intense challenges where there are still energetic leaks in the soul. 
If we have strongly given away our power, especially through react, strongly reactionary energy of hatred, of anger, of vengefulness, this is the idea of I'm going to get back at this person if it's the last thing I do. Again, a lot of this creation may be subconscious. We may not have realized we were, we were saying that, but if you're thinking about I, I had described this in a previous video. I was thinking about someone that I um, encountered, like an administrator in a school I went to uh, 20, 25 years ago. I was thinking about this person um, you know, in the last couple of months. And I was going about my day, and um, just the, the person sort of popped up into my consciousness. And I realized that I was like playing out sort of fantasy revenge sequences with this individual. I didn't have a great time with this administrator when I was in school. But um, I'm like, gosh, this is like 25 years later, and I'm still carrying with me the idea of getting back at this person for something. And I'm like, wait a minute. I was able to at least, because I'm in this work a lot, I was able to at least take a step back and realize I'm losing power to this individual. This person has probably long forgotten me. I'm not hurting the person by holding on to a grudge, but I'm hurting myself, certainly. And there is absolutely no purpose to me continuing in that way other than for me to continue to be invested in victim consciousness, look what happened to me, nursing old wounds, energetic leaks. And through being on this path enough, I've realized that is not worth it. It is not worth it to me to do that. We have to come to a point in our spiritual path where we realize that if we're having bitterness, hard-heartedness, revenge fantasies, anger towards anyone, including ourselves, including God, whatever our concept of God is, including our parents, including anyone known or unknown in the past, that it is simply not worth it to our energetic hygiene to continue on those paths. Because it costs us everything good that we're wanting in life. Then what begins to happen as we're holding that resentment, bitterness, and anger is we begin to have blocks to manifestation. We might be attracting entities of various kinds or other types of blocks. Now, usually when people have entity issues, they're also having blocks to being able to manifest their good of other kinds in life. And then that folds in on itself. We begin to then get into more blame. Blaming ourselves, blaming God, blaming life, blaming the past. This person did that to me. I know this is kind of the... This is the fodder for people who are working in counseling of some kind, is that, uh, or as a, a spiritual practitioner of some kind, is that people often are very unknowingly invested in blaming. Now, the blame can be of others. It can also be blaming yourself. That's usually the next phase that comes after we begin to hear, oh, I need to take more responsibility for who I am energetically now. We find that the first step on that path is that people then switch all their blame to themselves. Believing, I must be terrible, I must be awful, how could I have done this? That may be an evolutionary step, but it's, not, it's also based in victim consciousness. We're not trying to suggest that blaming yourself is somehow better than blaming others. It's all blame. What we're talking about is saying, with more neutrality, if we can get to this point in our healing process, with greater neutrality, come to a place of saying, you know what, these feelings that I'm having, these thoughts that I'm having right now, and sitting here in this moment, they're mine. They're coming from me. They're not coming from somebody else. They're not even, they're only coming from past situations to the degree to which I have been unwilling to actually let go and I keep pondering and holding on to the grudge from the past situations. But the thoughts and the feelings are actually mine. They're actually within me right now. They're not from somebody else. They're not somebody else's responsibility. And if we can begin to accept that, then we can begin to take the next step and we can begin to say, what do I do now? How do I begin to release? And I usually find again with chronic entity issues, there is a conscious work that needs to be done with this. It's not a matter of, again, finding the right spiritual healer necessarily. Um, it's a matter of going through some of these practices, looking at who am I, the, the strong emotions that tend to come up around these issues are um, victimization, trauma, hatred, anger, strongly held energies, not just like, well, um, I'm feeling just kind of blasé about the situation or I'm feeling a little bit, a little bit unresolved. No, it's a str there's a strong emotional investment usually. And this can begin to make us vulnerable to energies that seem to be from outside of us. 
So again, habitually blaming self, others, and God for our troubles, blocks, and limitations. Um, also, decisions, programs, contracts, and vows taken consciously or unconsciously in this or in past lives to take everything on ourselves. So beneath the level of this unprocessed emotional energy comes the energy of um, the spiritual programming that we create as uh, based in this discord energy. The discord energy begins to weaken our energy field. It begins to cause us to um, believe that we're fundamentally bad. It begins to cause us to believe that we're just, we should just be um, the victim of everything and everybody. When we're gravitating to victim consciousness frequently, we will begin to experience it more and more, both in the physical sense and in the non-physical sense in life. Until we're ready, until we have an epiphany, until we have an awakening, until we have a choice that comes as an inner realization in our own being saying, I cannot bear to be in that space anymore, and the only way is to move up. The only way out of it is to not capitulate to it, but to rise in consciousness into personal responsibility. Then we begin, we've begun to take the first step to uh, reducing and to resolving these issues. Now, there are many specifics around these issues as well. Some of the blocks that people have, some of the entities they have attracted, are beings that they have had past life relationships with. You know, there's a law of attraction. So the people in our lives physically right now that we've attracted of all different kinds of levels, we have past life connections with. Sometimes the types of blocks that we attract on a non-physical level are also beings that we have, may have hurt us, we may have hurt them in past lives, we may have unfinished business with them. The more, so that it makes it even more important for us to go into our inner work of forgiveness and of release and of letting go of these strong emotional energies. Because as we do so, even if we don't remember what the energies were originally about, as we do that, we begin dissolving those patterns across the board in many different relationships in our soul. We begin to become freer. We begin to become more released. The energy field then can become more vitalized and strong. Um, this, as a, as a related issue to chronic issues with attachments and blocks, is low levels of vitalization in the energy field. Low levels of, of energy and vitality in the energy field can become can come from our chronic emotional and mental states. They also can come from the actions or the non-actions that we take as a result of those states. If we are chronically eating junk food, we're going to lower our vitality. If we're not respecting and honoring ourselves, for instance, by eating food that is really appropriate for us and working on our health in that way, we're going to have lower vitality. When there's low uh, vitality in the energy field, low life force, um, the susceptibility that we have to energies all around us, other people's, even just emotional energy, even beyond the energy of simply entities, we can begin to take on and feel and attract to us um, other people's victimization energies or unresolved energies as well, and begin to become overly empathic. We can begin to feel, feel codependent um, we're just basically sort of leaving our own energy field open for whatever is happening around us. Again, believing that we've chronically believed that other people are responsible for our energies. And so we just are leaving our energy field chronically open. All of these considerations and energies go into the deeper psychological reasoning around why these energies are chronic. Now, I want to also say another thing. Just because you've been cleared of these types of blocks once doesn't necessarily mean that you will always remain cleared from them. It doesn't necessarily mean that you'll pick up again the same energies that you've picked up before. There may be other energies that come up over the course of time. This is for a couple of different reasons. One of the major reasons is that many of the blocks that have been attracted into your being in terms of entities you may have had a past life relationship. I just mentioned that before. You may have picked them up as a discordant soul attachment in a previous lifetime, or you may have known the particular being who is now acting in kind of a non-physical capacity with you. There we call them discarnates. You may have known those beings in previous lifetimes, and there may have been a relationship there. There may have been some harm committed. As you continue to move down your spiritual path, more of your soul records, more of your subconscious unfinished business in previous lifetimes and in this lifetime will begin to come forward. 
This is not because you're doing anything wrong. This is actually because you're doing everything right. This is because you are ready to allow another layer to come forward. So as that new layer comes forward, you may find that some new blocks are beginning to come up in terms of attachments or things that you need to clear from you. But as you begin to gain more and more power through your own energetic responsibility and autonomy in your soul, you will have more and more command and authority over releasing these, these beings and resolving the unfinished soul business that has caused the being to be attracted in the first place. There is a, so a chronic issue that people often talk about when they get in touch with me also is, I went into this space, you know, whether it's a bar or whether it's um, a sort of a lower energy space, maybe I went into this space and I picked up something there. I must have picked up something there or this other person over there was, they were in a really chronic discordant space. I must have picked up something from them. So most of us can probably relate to that. I know myself, I've had that experience many, many times, uh, not really recently, but I've had that experience much more before I learned the kind of techniques I'm working with now. So what, would, what could that be about? Remember that nothing is really happening to you in life. There's only one power, there's one presence, that's the presence of spirit. So the presence of spirit is operating through you, but it's also operating through the filter of your whole belief system, past and present. All the, all the things that you've given energy to that are still being given energy to, that is putting out a beacon, it's putting out a signal. Say you have 100 million programs of anger in your soul that are coming through from 10 lifetimes ago. So that's affecting you whether you know it or not. It's probably affecting you through feeling angry, it's probably affecting you through attracting situations that tend to trigger that or cause that within you. It's also acting as a beacon in your soul to attract situations and circumstances with people who are also angry. This is the way the evolutionary process happens. We, we see mirrored around us the situations that are going on within us, and then we, if we feel victimized by the situation at all, we begin to look within and we begin to say, what is it within me that needs to be resolved? So the thing is, we walk into, say we walk into a bar. The reason I use that as an example is because if there's energies of addiction going on, um, which, you know, alcoholism can be prominent in a bar, for instance. If there's energies of addiction going on in a situation, oftentimes people tend to have more entity issues um, because the entities can react to the person's own consciousness, reinforcing tendencies of addiction. So that's a common example. You walk in there and you walk home and you just don't feel good. So what happened there? So it's possible that you picked up something from somebody or even, not, even from the space itself. Spaces can hold this energy. This does not mean that the entity is victimizing you and that you simply shouldn't have gone there because um, you can't do anything about it because just by being in that space, you picked up this energy. It doesn't mean that. Because I use the example that several people could have walked into that space at that same time, and some of them may not have walked out with anything, some of them may have walked out with a lot of stuff. And even if all five of them walked out with something, they may have all walked out with different issues. So what is it that's determining that? Remember, there's always this law of consciousness going on in situations. Nothing is happening randomly. The entities that are coming home with us are those that are attracted to the particular vibration of your being. There may be lack of vitality in your being, it may low life force. For instance, alcohol can lower life force significantly anyway. So if that's the situation, um, you can be increasing susceptibility by lowering life force just in that case, and that can make you more vulnerable. You may also be, be running unfinished business in the subconscious that these entities and beings are attracted to. Along the way here, we also talk about people actually eventually running programs to pick up such beings. They might be running vows, contracts, programs that say, you know what, I'm already a victim of everything, so whatever is going to happen to me, I'm just, gonna, I'm just going to say I'm open for business. Again, none of this is conscious. Someone has this going on. But we often see people are running... Um, programs in the subconscious from their past lives and from this lifetime that make them more susceptible to these types of energies and beings. Um, 
And that can, we often see that they're also running sometimes vows or contracts to be a martyr, for instance, to be a savior. A lot of light workers, people who are on a spiritual path, um, often have a lot of work to do with energetic boundaries, empathy, compassion, and sympathy. There are people who are extremely sensitive, who are riddled with these types of energies, and they just think, well, if I was, only wasn't so sensitive, I wouldn't be picking them up. The thing is, we are here to um, learn and grow through these circumstances and through these situations. We're here to develop our gifts in a way that empowers us and others and encourages our levels of mastery. Being sensitive is not the problem. Um, being, um, you have to be in mastery of that gift over the, over the course of time. You have to realize all the things I've been talking about in this video. How are you losing power? How is there still unfinished business? How can you increase vitalization and balance in your energy field so that when you walk into a situation, you're feeling secure and solid in your own power, and you're not feeling, for instance, overly permeable, overly vulnerable, too diffuse, ungrounded, you're already dealing with issues of feeling victimized, feeling hatred, feeling anger, feeling, oh, life, why is this happening to me? If you're already dealing with those issues and you walk into a compromising situation, it's going to exacerbate it. So taking command of your own consciousness, taking, for instance, your own spiritual practice as a primary point of departure each day when you're going out into the world where there could be an increased sense of vulnerability, from people if you have unfinished business in the, in the physical or non-physical world, taking your energy and figuring out a way, how can I get my power back? How can I come back to myself? How can I balance? How can I align? How can I ground myself? How can I find a way to come back into a space where I'm feeling higher vibe? vibe? I'm feeling more in that empowered state rather than that victim state. Just the act of doing that, just the act of working with this consciously is going to make a huge difference in your day. It's going to make a huge difference. The entity issue will begin to seem like a non-issue over the course of time because you will begin resolving um, all of the, the way that your consciousness may still be in, invested in being a victim of something or someone, whether it's from this or other lifetimes. You will begin realizing, going out into your day, I'm responsible for my energy, I'm responsible for my consciousness, I'm responsible for... Even how sensitive I am to others and how that affects me, that, even to that level. I find myself, I mean, obviously, I'm a sensitive individual. I, I wouldn't be doing this kind of work if I weren't. And that has been a real challenge for me over the course of years, how to deal with that level of sensitivity. Because it can feel very much like a victimizing thing. I can feel stuff in people just by you know, looking at them or by communicating with them. Many people are like that. So that's not a bad thing. I would look at that as a gift, and it's actually that level of being able to do that has been able to empower me to do the work I'm currently doing. However, you have to learn how to manage that level of sensitivity as well so that you're not victimized by it. If I find myself feeling reactionary to people who are around me, I'm realizing in myself, oh, I am, maybe I'm not grounded. Maybe I'm not working out of my sense of personal empowerment. Maybe I feel stressed or tense, and that's kind of creating a sense of, of loss of power or victimization in my energy. And I have to go back looking to myself. I don't go around saying, why is this person doing this to me? Or I just picked that energy up because I went into the wrong place at the wrong time. Remember as we started this video with, that belief that I'm talking about now is the belief that you are a victim of something, that somebody else can cause you to feel a certain way. I want you to really hear that. People who are watching this video, the belief that somebody can cause you to feel a certain way is, ultimately speaking, a, a state of victim consciousness. Now, breaking that down for a moment, I'm not necessarily saying that in any given moment you shouldn't have felt angry. Oh, you shouldn't have felt those things. Feeling those things are bad. You know, just stop feeling. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, say there's a situation where um, someone was yelling at you and you felt 
sad, you felt closed hearted after, during that or after that, you felt angry, you feel bitter, it's kind of making knots in your stomach, all that sort of thing. Well, so what do you do in order to get out of that becoming a chronic situation for you? You do, really, this doesn't take a, a, a lot of technique to be able to figure out, but more and more people need to realize that they're giving their power away in these circumstances, and it's, it can become a chronic disempowerment issue. What you do is you come back to yourself as quickly as you can. In the course of a couple of hours, if you can be just seated, or maybe you want to be outside, you want to move the energy a little bit, you want to do some deep breathing, you want to do some yoga, even doing some meditation, something to help you to continue to, to keep that emotional reactivity, keep it being felt in your being rather than being repressed. You don't want to push it down and push it into yourself. You want to work with it as quickly after the reaction has taken place as possible. You want to also ask yourself and look at what is it within me that has reacted so strongly to this situation? What must I be believing to have reacted this strongly to the situation? Recognizing, yes, this other person, they, you may definitely have to set some boundaries, talk to the person, um, you know, help them to understand their responsibility in the situation. I'm not saying to just roll over and play dead. I'm saying to look at that your reaction to the situation is based on you, not based on the other person. It's based on where you were at in your own process of mastery at that moment. You didn't know how to choose something differently than what you chose. And so you chose what was available to you in that moment, which is all, all the, the feelings you have. This is not because the other person caused you to feel that way. This is such a, an incredi incredibly important point. So, do not go and blame yourself for having emotions. You go into feeling them fully and beginning to express them in a healthy way. Coming back and beginning as you practice, this is one of the most challenging things for anyone to do. As you begin to learn how to forgive, how can I release? How can I release this poison that I am swallowing now based on the situation that happened earlier? Remember, the situation has already come and gone, but what you're feeling right now is your own reactivity to the situation. As you begin to release and to let go, this is not always like a fully straightforward process to each person, but having the intention and having the ability and the knowledge of some of these practices to begin to apply when you need to apply them is going to keep your energetic boundaries more solid. It's going to keep you from getting into a situation of losing power, energetic leakage, holes in the aura, still being tied to this past situation, to this past person, as that kind of issue of chronically losing power becomes more chronic to you, that's when you can become also vulnerable to non-physical entity attachments. Take a deep breath on that. So, so what can we do about this? I have found that, I was just asking Spirit before this recording began, that in general, um, when we do a clearing session, whether it's a group clearing, or whether it's a video like this, whether it's an individual clearing, in general, um, over the last month or two before I'm making this video, about 92% or so of the people that I've worked with have released and cleared all discordant entities and energetic attachments just by participating in clearing work at that moment. Now, an hour from then, or a day from then, that may be a different story depending on how their consciousness is working. So getting cleared once doesn't necessarily mean you're going to always be clear. It doesn't mean that you or I or anyone has done anything wrong. It just means that there's the consciousness is always shifting, evolving. There's new layers coming up. There may be, again, emotional reactivity and things that you need to work on. I find that most people, I just want to say this to you, that most people when they come in for a clearing, well, let me say, let me requalify this, 100% of people when they come in for a clearing have some forms of blocks or attachments with them when we begin the clearing. Now, the blocks can sometimes be beings. They can sometimes be collective consciousness, fear, discordant thought forms. We, we qualify these as various forms of blocks because they can limit our ability to perceive and to know and to open to clearing work into the fullness of our consciousness. So we qualify those also as forms of blocks. 
Um, but 100% of people have them every time we work. Doesn't mean that that's a problem. It just means that there are many layers to go on these types of issues. And over the course of time, I'll tell you my own personal experience. Now, I do clearing work on myself every day, often multiple times a day, especially when I'm working with others. But more and more, I find that as I am clearing and resolving the layers within myself that have been contributing to those entity issues in the first place, I find that I'm able to go into any situation and to feel freedom in the situation, to not feel that, oh, I'm being inundated with this energy or with these entities. Um, I feel that I am able to come back into my own sense of power more and more often, and I'm able to amplify and spread that sense of empowerment around me rather than contracting into any perceived discordant energy or attachments that are around me. That's really ultimately the goal. The goal is for you to go into your day feeling such a sense of ownership, energetic responsibility, power, connection to your own inner spirit. You're feeling so connected. You've spent that few minutes or however long it takes, even in the morning before you go into your day to begin to Set your intention, set your energy. Again, finding out how to do this can be challenging in and of itself, but it's worth investing in the practice. So you set your energy for the day, and as you go out into your day, you are bringing empowerment into your situations. And as I said earlier in this recording, there is only one power and one presence. When Where the presence of spirit is, there cannot be anything ultimately that will contradict or limit that. It's not good versus evil. It's not your energy that might be good coming across someone who's might be bad. It's not like that. The power of spirit always wins out. The power of spirit is unconditionally good, abundant, joyful, healing. Those are the qualities of spirit, and you are an emanation of spirit. So the important thing is for you to, to realize, recognize, touch base with consciously that power, that presence, every day, even multiple times a day. And then as you walk out into your workplace, you walk out into situations in your life, you are beginning to emanate this divine power in your life. And that's the complete, that's the transcendence of the consciousness of victimization. You understand that when you're vibrating at a higher level, you're impermeable to the vibrations at a lower level. They don't have, they're not fighting. I kind of get a little bit I would say spiritually arrogant about this sometimes, like not really, not, not really arrogant in the negative sense of that, but um, I can, you know, walk into situations as I'm working on my consciousness more, can walk into situations where there feels like there's this heaviness, there's this cord and vibration, there's people who are really invested in this lower level of consciousness. And I can realize immediately, oh, that's just their, that's their belief. It has no power over them, but they're giving it power for some reason. That has no power. That has no authority over me, certainly. I'm not going to take that on. I'm not going to believe that. I'm not going to get into believing that I'm the victim of something or that they're the victim of something. You stay in this higher octave. And what begins to happen, if the person is available to that shift, is that they begin to join you in that higher space just by your presence being there, possibly just by you talking to the individual. It may take... You know, if you're working with someone in a therapeutic way or a healing way, it may take more than that to be able to dissolve people's uh, discordant vested interests in their own victimization. But you do not have to go into that lower ebb. You come up with the octave of spirit, and it becomes that becomes super fun over the course of time. As you begin to, I'm not talking about being chronically ungrounded and chronically out of your body and just like woo-woo new agey. I'm talking about being vital, balanced, spiritually connected, mentally and emotionally in a state of mastery. Your physical body beginning to you know, feed your, your physical body in ways that are really working with your metabolism, that are empowering to you, high vibration foods. As you do that, you are bringing the power of spirit. And these issues become non-issues to you over the course of time. So, just to sort of sum up that, what I'm saying is that, ultimately, 
these entity issues are really the projections of our own consciousness. Not to say that there aren't spiritual beings that can attach into people, but they cannot ever do that without our permission. As I said in previous videos, Eleanor Roosevelt said once that no one can, something like to the extent of no one can victimize you without your permission. And this is well worth taking as a powerful spiritual truth. When you realize that you've gotten into that low ebb, maybe you've attracted something, maybe you're dealing with something chronically, you take your attention off of trying to fix the issue, trying to fix the problem external to you, whether this is an entity issue or any other issue in life, you come back to yourself, you realize that, oh, my temptation might be now to blame myself, but that that's not also going to empower me. But you begin to come back to yourself and take energetic responsibility and say, what is this within me? What is this within even my known or unknown parts in the subconscious that is continuing to create this situation? Because it is always something within yourself that is creating, it's always out picturing into your life experiences. And you begin to ask the question, what can I do about this? And if you reflect on the items that I've talked about in the course of this video, that can help you with especially chronic issues or deep issues, reflecting on these points within yourself. Other than that, um, if someone is holding a high space and knows how to ask for clearing, even you yourself, for your own being, you can begin to come into a place of just simply allowing spirit to do the work for you, to release you from these challenges, and to begin to feel clearer. So what I'd like to do now is, it's probably already been done for this group, but I'd like to just give a demo of these particular parts of clearing for this group. I know when I first encountered this way of clearing and this particular um, way of approach, I found that it was getting access to things I didn't realize I was holding on to. That there are things that our own consciousness can really be hiding. Because we may feel a sense of shame that we're even holding on to something. And that begins to build in on itself. And then we don't even know it's there. And then we don't know how to re resolve or clear it. So I found that when I first started to do this kind of work, that I was getting new levels of clarity new levels of, of inspiration and release. Um, I will say, as I've written on my website, that most people do understand, if they understand anything about this issue of entities, they will understand that they will feel better if they can release the entities. But of course, sometimes people are subconsciously unwilling to actually do the inner realization work that can lead them to being truly free. If that happens, there really isn't anything I or anyone else can do about it. But if someone is willing to look at the items I've talked about in this video and on my website, um, they can be free. And I find that most people can become very free very quickly. Um, so I'm, I just would invite you, if you're interested in getting some clearing around this, again, Spirit has been working um, through this group over the course of this video already. I'm just going to invite you to take a deep breath and to settle in for a moment. It'll probably be longer than a moment, but... I'm just going to you to settle in. My specific intention is to help work on the issues that we've talked about in the course of this video. Remember that I know as a spiritual healing practitioner myself that I cannot fix any issue for any other being. All I can do is work on my own consciousness and invite people who are willing and ready and able to come into that higher ebb of consciousness with me. But ultimately, Jesus, Krishna, Buddha, nobody can do this work for anybody else. When I talk about issues, even of clearing, even of spiritual clearing work, I know some of you practice various forms of spiritual clearing work, and you know that no matter how good your techniques are, no matter how good your method is, you cannot make anyone else to be clear. You cannot make them to be receptive and open. They, there has to be a part of their being that is ready, that's tired of all of this victimization stuff and that's really ready to move forward so i just encourage you now to go within if i had a musical soundtrack right now i'd start to play that for you just to go in within right now take a deep breath remember you are the healer of your own life you are the most powerful healer for you and you are the only healer for you every other people books audio programs you know gurus practitioners whatever can facilitate based on your own willingness, but they cannot do the work beyond that. So just 
going within at this moment, just seeing how you feel. Just, I want you to check in with yourself in this moment to see how you feel. Emotionally, how does your body feel? How are your, how are your thoughts right now? These are all important considerations. As you know, I always ask this question nowadays at the beginning of my individual clearings. Just be honest with yourself without blame. So, oh, I feel, you know, you can, you can talk about your feelings and your experience. Oh, I feel tight here. I feel like just some churning going on, whatever. Be honest with yourself about that. But just allow yourself to express the sensation without going into a whole story about it. Oh, I'm feeling this tension, so I must be a terrible person. You know, that's what all of us will do. So don't, avoid going there. Just for the purposes of this clearing, just get to know where you're at at this moment. Again, Spirit's been doing clearing throughout the course of this recording anyway, but I'm just going to formally ask for some additional things to be released for each of us. So Spirit, I'm asking in this moment for each person watching that you please clear, remove, and release 100% of all various forms of blocks, attachments, what we call soul family or extra souls, all versions of these energies for each person here as well. Now there's an infinite variety. We don't really even have to get into a big deal and big story about talking about, well, it's, it's this type of discarnate or it's this type of entity or whatever. It doesn't really matter. And I prefer just not giving that stuff too much authority and power by, by getting into it. Um, super a lot. And so just allowing this sense of connection to come in. So Spirit, I'm asking you to, to make sure each person here, their, um, their God, Goddess self is 100% aware and workable with 100% of knowledge of all t- forms of attachments so that can be active for any person here. And to clear, release, remove. Again, any, for- any form of these blocks as well. So all active forms Spirit, but also anything hidden dormant, inactive, anything that our being, our soul, even our guardian angels, our guides, even our, uh, any other being known or unknown here in the physical world or any place else might be having an investment or a vested interest in holding on to. We're asking that all of that be, all of those reasons be cleared as well. Yeah. And we be cleared and released. Now, Spirit, we're also just going to mention here implants of various kinds. Alien implants, other types of blocking energies, stuck energies. If there's courting spirit, if there's, again, energetic investment that we have allowed, consciously or unconsciously, from other beings. Because we didn't know how to be strong enough in that moment, we gave over our power, including psychic cords, hooks, ties, all of this type of stuff that can be stuck into the chakras, stuck into the subconscious mind, that can be stuck into the aura and energy field. We're asking for all of that to be resolved, but also the programming and the causative energy within our own consciousness to be also resolved. We're asking Spirit to perform an infinite relationship clearing protocol between us and all of the various types of entities, blocks, um, these maybe soul family, if we're dealing with other, other beings who have been attached in unknowingly. Running an infinite relationship clearing protocol, clear all the binding agents. So there are reasons why these energies are coming in in the first place that may or may not be known fully to us. But we're just asking Spirit to release all those reasons, including contracts and programs, agreements, vows, even forms of addiction energies that might be keeping energies bound to us now. Yeah, and Spirit, we're asking you to work with the physical space of each person who is watching here as well. Work with all of their levels, layers, bodies and minds of their soul consciousness as well. All the way to a thousand spirit, all the way down to zero. De-investing. Reasons that are based in victim consciousness that are causing these types of discord energies to be be chronic for people, to be ongoing. You will find, friends, the vast majority of you watching this video now or anytime in the future will find that the vast majority of these types of energies, um, well, the vast majority of you will receive a full clearing of all of these types of blocks. And I know for myself, the first time that this really um, clicked in for me, I was like, whoa, I had no idea that there was stuff that was there that was, um, I was carrying. There we go. Just taking a deep breath, just relaxing. 
Yeah. We are stepping into a greater sense of empowerment right now. I want you to feel that um, coming in, in your being now, greater sense of empowerment. Remember, empowerment is the truth of your being. It's already there. But your vibe may not have been resonating with it, at least not fully. And so we do this kind of work so that we can um, step more into the fullness that we already are. Taking a deep breath and relaxing. Again, spirit, any vested interests that any of us are holding here, including any other types of programs or reasons why we may be holding on to anything that is limiting us in any way, we ask you to resolve and run this initial clearing process, spirit, in full for each person here, please. We're asking as much as possible in this moment that you please also clear and resolve all present and past life repressed energies of anger, hatred, and victim consciousness. Any vested interest spirit, even any sense that we need, want, or desire to continue to hold those types of energies, even if they're not totally consciously known to us. We ask that that energy be cleared. All past and present life roots spirit. This feeling. Spirit, I know that we, you cannot, I mean, I'm speaking of spirit in the second person, but spirit is not really different than us. Spirit is just our own uh, infinite consciousness. And so spirit cannot clear all unfinished emotional business for us um, if we are not ready. A soul level, maybe, you know, even at least a spiritual subconscious level to do so. But oftentimes we are, and we just don't know how to, how to resolve. But so asking spirit to resolve all the strong emotional unfinished business Trauma that we be holding conscious or not just leave the lifetimes. Just resolving all of that programming, resolve also to a place 100% our physical body, our etheric, our emotional, mental, and spiritual bodies are 100% receptive, open, aware, and workable to 100% of the benefits of this work that we're doing now. So you feel this. In our present moment awareness. And so yourself, friends, in this moment, everything that we've said in the course of this video, just feel yourself saying, it is not worth it for me to be holding on to victim consciousness anymore. It's not worth it for me to be holding on to unfinished business in the past. I make the intention to fully forgive, to fully release, to fully let go of anything that I've been holding on to consciously, subconsciously, any level of my being, even just saying that, even making that intention, it's a powerful intention. It's a spiritual intention. You're not asking for something to be given to you in the physical world. You're making a commitment and an openness to a change in consciousness. When you do that, you are opening yourself to the changes that you're looking for showing up in the physical world. So you're working with consciousness rather than working with the material. This is so important. Just continuing to breathe, continuing to, to just listen within yourself. Spirit, any places that we're losing power to situations, relationships, intense challenges, any energetic leaks in the soul that might be coming through as a blockage in the aura, spirit, hole in the aura, rip a tear. We ask you to please sew up, work with our beautiful healing angels now, to, and our etheric healing and repair teams to begin to sew up those leaks and holes in the aura to make ourselves more vital. And we'll also ask for an infusion of divine life force energy here. So life force energy, friends, really is the energy of chi or prana. And it comes about, uh, uh, it's, we already have some or else we could not be alive. It's what's beating our heart and causing our brains to work and causing us to be alive. But we can cultivate and work with that energy through right nutrition and through um, mindful movement practice and through right emotions and through getting our, our mind going in a direction more and more continuously with what we want to be programming ourselves with. The mind leads the chi in the body, so we're just asking for some vitalization coming from the realm of spirit to come in now. 
those of you who are spiritual healers and are working in this uh, idea of working with other people, working in spiritual healing, clearing practices, whether it's talking, whether it's counseling, whether it's um, through hands-on work of some kind, really, really important that you continue to deal with your own vitality because that can be lost over the course of years if you are not really on top of it. Spirit clearing and resolving the sense and programs and investments of energy is a blame for this group now as well. Blaming self, blaming others, blaming God, blaming circumstances, blaming situations. Everything coming up here, spirit, any sense of investments, wants, needs, desires, beliefs, perceptions, judgments, even addictions to blame that are coming up at any level, body and mind of our being now, we're asking to release and to resolve. Now again, if you're not ready to resolve the blame, spirit cannot do anything about that. But there may be a good chunk of blame that um, is ready to be resolved that you may or may not even know where it's coming from. Remember, just because you don't remember something doesn't mean it's not actually part of your consciousness. The vast majority of who we are is not remembered by our conscious mind now. Thankfully, or else it would be completely overwhelming but we are dealing with the results, uh, the ramifications of that held energy. So just in this moment, making the decision, I'm going to release all blame. I'm going to forgive everything, including myself, including God. My, again, concept of God. I'm going, to, I'm going to forgive, I'm going to release, I'm going to de-invest all sense of blame. Come back into my own vitalization, recognizing I don't have to blame myself either. But I am responsible for the quality of my consciousness. How do I know what my consciousness is? Well, whenever I'm thinking or feeling something, that's my opportunity to, to get into the core of like, why am I thinking or feeling this right now? Do I have a choice to change it to something else? Is there something I need to listen to within myself that is coming up, is bubbling up to the surface? I don't want to just uh, avoid something that I need to feel or I need to process. That's important. It's important that we feel and process whatever is coming up for us, but we also don't get stuck there with what is emerging, that we get, we are enabled through our spiritual practice to rise higher and higher into a place of feeling better and better in time. Spirit resolving and releasing all decisions, programs, contracts, vows, taking consciously in this or other lifetimes to take everything on ourselves, to have unclear boundaries to have um, increased or excessive, spirit, excessive spiritual permeability, excessive empathy, excessive sympathy. I would say in many ways, sympathy and empathy are evolutionary, but they're not where we want to, to end up. We actually want to end up at compassion, which is being able to hold our high vibration space and to see without judgment where someone else is truly at. It's different than taking on the energy ourselves. It's different than I feel bad because you feel bad. So you have the right to feel good. I want you to just hear that now. You have the right, as a matter of fact, not only that, if you're willing to hear this, you have the responsibility to feel good. It doesn't mean you have to blame yourself if you don't right now. It just means that that is the path that we're on to go into greater and greater mastery. As we do that, we can deliver our gifts onto the planet more and more. We can be of greater service and also quite literally, but also symbolically, we are raising the consciousness of the planet as we're doing this. That's your responsibility. Remember, ultimately the only thing that you can really do on this planet to serve is to raise your consciousness and to act from that place of higher consciousness. This really makes it easy. People are feeling like they're such, they're so they're so blocked on my issues in life. Go in and begin to forgive and ri rise in con every way that you can possibly find to raise your consciousness to a place of feeling really good and really aligned, really connected with spirit, because all of your answers start there. We don't, do not have to fix the world of problems. We have to come back to spirit. And just by, this is where I started this call with, we don't have to fix entities. We don't have to fix problems. We don't have to fix problems in life at all. We have to come back to a place of the cultivation of our own consciousness. 
And when we do that, the solution begins to emanate from us. If we continue to believe, oh, the world of effects is where the problem is, and we're trying to control that, that puts the responsibility outside of ourselves, oh, that other person would feel this way, oh, that situation, that other person is doing this to me, then we are, we're giving over our power. That's a, that's a state of victim consciousness. By allowing ourselves to come back into a place of taking energetic responsibility for our being as a first priority, that's why I'm so passionate about this kind of work because this work sets the stage for every other type of healing and manifestation process that you're wanting or needing in life. By working within first, by putting all of your energy to bear on how can I arise in consciousness first, all of your other challenges begin to get met. Jesus called that seeking first the kingdom. And he said, if you do that, all of these things that you're wanting will be added unto you. So it's the first and only principle of spiritual healing that the only thing that can shift is consciousness. Or else, if you're not shifting consciousness, you're out there trying to fix in the world of the problem. And that's, that's a place of relative disconnection to try to work from the problem. But if you're connected, if you're making your consciousness your priority first, and then daily, beginning to act from that place, you're going to begin to manifest co-creatively with spirit, and you're going to be able to manifest the outcomes, not necessarily the outcomes you're looking for, because your ego may have a big saying of like, I need this particular outcome. Once again, vested interest in the outcome. I need this particular outcome or else I can't be happy, which again is putting your attention into the external world. But I'm saying that you begin to get inspired. You begin to connect into that sense of visioning in your connection with spirit. And as you do that, the outcomes that come out from you um, are greater and better than you could have ever imagined. Not necessarily always what the ego thinks it wants, but it is absolutely fulfilling and providing for all of your needs at every level. Spirit, let's just bring this session, this clearing to a conclusion, making sure 100% of everyone has received and accepted it. Just doing a quick clearing here. Yeah, good, good. Feeling that sense of energetic autonomy coming back into you. I want you to notice that. Getting to know yourself, getting to know how you operate, why you operate the way you do is the most important thing. That's where all your answers lie. I want to say just again, whenever you're tempted to believe, I need to fix this problem in life. Just by you hearing what I'm saying to you right now, um, you're not going to really be able to rest in this life until this is made fully available in your awareness. That the inside has to shift for the outside to shift. It's always a matter of consciousness. And what's nice about this is that you have total control over your consciousness. You don't have control over circumstances always but you have control over what's going on within you. At the very least, what you're thinking and what you're feeling, you can begin to shift that with time, figuring out techniques and ways to work with this energy. I'm just breathing, we're still clearing by the way. Yeah. Good. Spirit, let's bring it to a completion. Beautiful. Can you breathing, friends? I'm just going to begin to check into the questions here. If there are any questions, I'm, I'm going to start asking for them in just a moment. Beautiful. Continuing to just breathe and to allow. Good, good. Noticing what's happening within you. Good. 
Good, good. Helping to clear up the emotional body spirit again, aligning all the energy bodies and templates. Yeah. Each person to just begin to feel, even with a part of their being, feel that nudge of spirit moving through them. So I'm going to open up a little bit now. If any of you want to comment in terms of how you're feeling at this moment or share anything, please feel free to do that. If you have any questions about what we've talked about, any burning questions about what we've talked about in this video, please feel free to post that. Okay, so Kelly, you're asking, um, can we get a copy of this clearing? So... Um, the question is, so the answer is, this clearing is going to be posted indefinitely into this YouTube group. Um, it's probably also going to be on YouTube. Uh, this, sorry, this Facebook group is also going to be on YouTube. So you can listen indefinitely at that point. Um, okay, so Krishna. So it's interesting. So people feeling physical sensations sometimes with this, with the clearing. Um, that can often happen. Sometimes people feel emotional sensations with clearing work. Sometimes they feel physical sensations. It kind of depends on how what we're working on may have gotten represented in your, your present moment consciousness. Um, it, you just mentioned random pain. So it's, it's actually not random pain. Um, the pain may be felt in terms of certain organ systems, certain chakras, certain meridian systems as the energy begins to release. What I just encourage you to do is do some deep breathing. Um, maybe do some movement after this clearing or even during this video. And um, it will probably pass within a few hours. It's just energy that's moving on its way out. And um, sometimes it comes up as a physical or, or emotional sensation. Sharon, you're saying, um, good, you're feeling lighter. That's great. So, Lisa, you're asking about your space. So let me ask you, does this also clear our space? So, does your space feel clearer? So, you know, spaces can hold energy. Um, but again, we do not have to be the victim of that energy at all. And if we're acting from a place, of, this is just going out to everybody, if we're acting and coming from a place of greater clarity, we can simply say, Spirit, clear the space and it's done. Um, great, Scotty. Yep. So, you know, my subconscious intention with this uh, work is that the space also does get cleared. Remember the space, any particular space is holding energy from the people who have been there. It can also be holding energy from different um, aspects of the physical or non-physical world intersecting with that space. Um, I find, just personally, this is my own personal practice, I find that I often do clearing um, when I go into a new space automatically, just asking for it. Again, I, I practice this kind of work over tens of thousands of clearings, so I've gotten good at being able to step into my space of being able to do it and being able to just uh, feel and know it's being done. Or sometimes I'll ask for, for clearing before the, uh, I go into a space if I want to. Um, I was at an event... Um, recently, and there was you know a thousand people or so at the event, and I had been doing energy work all day, so I was really connected into that vibe already. So I wouldn't recommend this for anyone who's uh, not already feeling super that sense of clarity and connection in your own being. But I just um, I you know I've developed some ways of just going inside and doing this work um, without any equipment or any uh, charts or anything like that. So I just started asking for basically the kind of clearing that we're doing here to be done uh, for anyone who wanted it. I just was asking my mind for anyone who wanted it in the course of the group of a thousand or so. And it's very interesting. Um, my energy was very expanded, expanded as a result of, of doing that day's worth of work. And I could see this is totally uh, not conscious to any of the people, obviously, uh, in their conscious minds who were at this event. But I could see various people around the room like these beautiful shafts of like blue light sort of just surrounding them from the head down, uh, who was immediately receptive and open to the clearing. But in addition to that, I also asked for the, um, the, the room and the space to be cleared. It's something I chronically do just because since I'm in this work, I feel like it's 
it's part of my offering to be able to, um, there's the vast majority of the planet would never find their way to this video or to me or to people who are doing similar work. So I figure, you know, but at a subconscious level, there are lots of people who are receptive to this kind of clearing. And so I'm just like, why not spread it around? Because it only benefits me and everyone to have more clarity on the planet. Um, let's look here. Diotima. So you're asking, oops, my comments are, let me just refresh this page a little bit. Some of my comments are, are going away quickly. So if I miss your comment at all, um, feel free to, I'll look back later. I might type some comments here. Now I'm not sure where that comment went. Okay. Um, feeling lighter. I think you were asking something about is the, uh, is the clearing something you have to ongoingly do or is it something that's permanent? So I would say that in the vast majority of cases, what we're working on right now in terms of this clearing is going to be permanently cleared for those of you who are participating either now or, you know, it's, it's almost as effective um, when you watch the video in the future. It's, the only difference might be because I'm not necessarily as aware of the energy of people who will watch the video in the future. So right now, people are watching the video. Your energy is getting, the things that are coming up are getting cleared. Now, that being said, consciousness is constantly in flux for us in terms of what we're creating, what we're resonating with, and also our subconscious, which is very vast. And so I find that there's always layers to be cleared. However, that doesn't necessarily mean it's always going to be one step forward and one step back. Um, I find that with time, this work is able to be, you're able to maintain at a higher and higher level and feel better and better. You're also, you can increase your level of awareness because you can feel, oh, there's something, there's a thought or there's a being or there's something coming up within me that you may immediate, re immediately recognize as this is not really about right now, but it's something being revealed in my subconscious. And as soon as you recognize that, you can begin to work with that energy and shift it. So um, from my own personal experience, and for people I've worked with regularly over time, and who people who are taking conscious responsibility in their spiritual path and connecting uh, with spirit on a regular basis, life begins, it becomes kind of like a spiral. We do feel like a little bit of stuff coming up, and then we'll move to a higher level as we resolve that. Then we'll kind of come back and feel a little bit of new stuff maybe coming up, some of that we've created, some of that has come up from the subconscious as we clear that, and we continue to move higher and higher in this spiral over the course. What I mean is to a place of greater mastery, to a place of greater clarity, to a place of just feeling better and better all the time. So I hope that answers that question. Uh, Lisa, you're mentioning feeling tired and nauseous. So being feeling, feeling tired is a common sensation with this work. Again, um, like we were saying, if you're feeling stuff in the body, sometimes there's a lot of energetic movement happening, maybe it's certain organs of the body, certain, inner, certain uh, chakras have had more stuff going on. Some it could be solar plexus. If there's stress, for instance, sometimes relationship stuff, that kind of stuff can, can coagulate in that part of the body. But whatever it is, um, I would just encourage you to breathe deeply into the abdomen. And um, as you go about your day, make sure to ground yourself, make sure to balance yourself out as best as you can. Some flower essences might help. And I think the sensations as you kind of lean into them and move through this clearing or, or other work throughout the day will begin to subside. Beautiful. Yeah, good, good. <laughs> so, dear Timo, you're asking about a book. So, um, I do have a book. M many people do not know this. It's available on my website. It's called Grounded in the Light. I actually really recommend that to people. You can get it on Amazon also. I recommend this to people because it kind of gives a, a larger framework for what I'm talking about here um, of spiritual growth. Ba it's about balance, grounding, and working and growing in a balanced manner, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. I, that came out a couple of years ago, so I, I recommend that if you want to check that out. Um, beautiful, Marita, thank you. Yeah, Angel Pink, you're good, you're feeling lighter. Feeling blank, I like that. 
You know, that's something that can often come up in this kind of work. People can begin to feel like um, a sense of mental clarity, which people are often so inundated a lot with, with stuff coming up in their thoughts that this work actually has a very specific impact to the brain and to the mental body. And it can help people to be able to think um, more clearly. If any of you are guided to want to do some meditation after this recording, uh, please feel free to do that because that's a, it's much, much easier. That was one of the surprising benefits of this kind of clearing work is that you can begin to meditate more easily um, because of the impact that um, happens in the mind. So if I'm missing any of the comments, um, I will look back through these comments in the Facebook group over the course of the next uh, few hours or day, and I will write some, some things there. If any of you are watching this after the recording has been made, please feel free to comment also. Um, you can also get in touch with me if any time you find this video. If you want to go to my website, clearandconnect.com, there's places there you can you can contact me if there's some specific issues coming up for you. Now, remember, I've given a kind of a larger framework. We're still clearing, by the way. So if you're not hearing what I'm saying right now, I understand. I've given a, a framework, which is the framework I often give in this kind of work for how people can step into greater mastery and freedom, especially around the, enti the en issue of entities, of attachments. But this all gets back to the fundamental point of all spiritual healing, which is the point is that there is one presence, and this is the presence of spirit, you are actually a representation of spirit right where you are right now. We all are. Now, we have partially forgotten that. That's because of our, our false identifications that we have made with, you know, reacting to life. That per Again, all the stuff we've been talking about, victim conscious, that person did this to me. Uh, when we begin to believe that, we begin to create kind of an illusory awareness where we forget our oneness with spirit. But the oneness doesn't go away, it just gets hidden for, for a period of time. So anyone who is, I uh, realize this video is very long, so you might be coming in at the very end. Uh, anyone who's struggling with anything in life, you're struggling with a uh, relationship, you're struggling with health, you're struggling with finance, you're struggling with career, you're struggling with just feeling better mentally or emotionally. These are kind of the major areas that people contact me about. Any area that you're struggling in in life, from a spiritual clearing and healing perspective, I think from a really holistic perspective, the first place to start is with your internal self, with your consciousness. You have control over that. You have control over your beliefs, your thoughts, where you're going to put your attention. You have control over your attitude. There is such abundance and such freedom when you realize that. Now, the reason why that is initially difficult for some people is because you are also right now dealing with all the programming, all the, the false or limiting beliefs that you've set in motion over the course of your soul's history. And those things are still there if they haven't been resolved yet. That's why I do the kind of clearing work I do. As that stuff gets resolved and cleared over the course of time, it makes it much, much easier for you to be able to access that sense of, I have the ability to choose what I'm thinking. I have the ability to choose my emotions, my life experience. It's super, super empowering to have that realization. I work on that a lot in my own life. I realize at some points in my life, if I feel like, you know, even these days, if I feel like, oh, this situation, I'm concerned about it, I'm worried about it, I'm um, feeling like I don't know what to do about it. I get into those, those spirals less these days, but I still find myself there on occasion. I, can, I realize when I'm in those, those times, wait a minute, there's some way in which I'm feeling disempowered, I'm feeling out of my own connection with spirit, I'm feeling, I immediately go within. I don't try to go, go to fix the situation, because I know that the situation doesn't exist independent of my own consciousness about it. So I immediately go within and say, how have I lost my sense of freedom? and lost my sense of choice about this situation. And as I do this kind of clearing work on myself um, and do conscious work and work with affirmations and work with all the things I've been talking about in this video, getting grounded, moving the body, all of these types of practices, I can come into a place of absolute knowing and feeling without contradiction that 
there is good, that there is healing, there is hope, there is joy, the abundance is. All of these qualities that I think I'm looking for in the external world, I can begin to feel and sense as internal states. This is what we're starting to get into, really, what the spiritual path is all about. If you can begin to take your entire attention off of what's wrong external to you, even the physical body is in many ways, you know, it's external in the sense that who you are is really an infinite non-physical being having this human incarnation. So if you can begin to take your complete attention off of what's wrong and begin to come to a place of knowing, um, knowing your connection, your oneness, complete uh, awareness of your connection to spirit from, a, from an internal place, your problems have begun to be solved right then. That's really the name of the game. If you cannot come to that place or you do not know that that's something that you need to do or you don't you think oh I just that's that's a waste of time not not that this group would think that but many people including myself for many years thought oh I just I don't want to take the time I've heard this from many people um, I don't want to take the time to meditate that's a waste of time I want to be out there doing something um, I've heard that from many ministers actually over the course of years so they don't, they don't want to take the time to connect in they want to be out there doing so the problem with that is that you're constantly locked. If you don't take the time for your own consciousness to evolve, to grow, to clear, you don't take the investment to do that first, you're constantly operating from the sense of trying to fix or solve a problem. You're trying to impact and resolve the problem at the level of consciousness of the problem. Oh, I'm going to fix this issue by working harder. I'm going to fix this issue by sending out more resumes. I'm going to fix this issue by doing a bunch, taking a bunch of pills or, or whatever it is. You're constantly trying to work at the level of the problem. Now that, you know, that can help for a period of time. There's certainly people who are feeling better when they do all of those things. But if you're looking for the solution to really come from your highest sense of awareness and consciousness of who you truly are, if you're looking for the highest vision of your life to really to come forward, if you've been feeling chronically stuck in some area of life that does not seem to be easy to work on or to resolve from the place of just forcing, struggling, straining, trying harder, um, you know, doing more stuff to struggle with it. Believe me, I understand that um, that process because I was there a lot in many areas of my life. If you cannot seem to make something manifest, and those are the people who often end up on my, my step. They're trying everything. They're even trying some kind of spiritual principles to begin to work with, but things are not really manifesting for them. There ha you have to come back to that basic principle of I have to release, I have to let go, I have to get into that place of connection. You may want to work with some spiritual healing or clearing facilitation at that point because it may be beyond your conscious ability to immediately choose that. But as the layers get resolved for you, you will begin to, and I always, I always encourage people after a clearing session, even like this video, to use your time at least for 30 or 60 minutes after this video to do some conscious journaling work, some meditation work to go for a walk where you can allow your consciousness to expand and you can begin to be receptive to spiritual ideas coming through you, to put your conscious practice immediately on the heels of this kind of subconscious clearing. Because what's wanting to happen now is that you need to become receptive to, I, to divine and spiritual ideas that are going to inspire, inspire you, that are going to help you on the next part of your path. You've taken that time to connect in during the course of this recording. And now you need to use your present moment senses, physical, the emotional, the mental body, to listen, to be still, to open, to avail yourself of the guidance that's wanting to come through. And then as you now have a greater degree of availability, a greater degree of connection, you then therefore have a greater degree of choice. And as you get inspired and take these divine ideas into your, into your being that are coming forth for you now, you will be guided in exactly the right way to, to manifest whatever it is you're looking to manifest, to change, to heal in your life. That's what we mean by this spiritual work being co-creative. Many people go for lifetime after lifetime without really looking at their connection to spirit first. And ultimately... Um, we have to resolve and clear that connection so that we can, um, we can be empowered to create and do and act in ways that are really 
truly empowering and truly are um, solution oriented in life. And I want to encourage you, so it's not just a passive process, you're not just going to go for a clearing or healing, that is part of the process, but you're also going to need to take conscious authority and autonomy over your own consciousness and mind. What am I taking into my body? What am I thinking? What am I feeling? To begin to work with conscious practice here, to begin to develop greater self-awareness, to begin to release where you need to release. As you do these practices, you will begin to... um, with, with so much ease, so much lightness, so much joy, find yourself entering into the solution immediately. It will almost seem like it will fall into your lap. It will almost seem completely obvious, completely easy. If there's struggle, strain, and force involved, it means that there's a disconnection. We're acting out of limited consciousness. But if there's ease, if there's flow, if there's lightness, if there's joy, if there's how much better can this situation get, how much joy, more joy can this situation have? If there's that, then we know that we're operating from a place of our connection to spirit rather than from a place of those old programs of victimization, of blame, all the stuff we've been talking about in this video. So if you find this video at some point in the future or even now and you feel somehow, if you're tuned into this vibration of entities, attachments, that kind of thing, and you feel somehow like they haven't been fully cleared for you, Uh, in terms of your experience right now in this video, then the other factors that are involved in this video that I talked about earlier are are really at play. Sometimes there can be an interface between doing clear, if you're aware that, yes, there are factors going on, I have been losing power to the situation, Um, I have been in chronic blame uh, for something in the past. If you're aware of these issues, then it's only a matter of time before those get resolved. What I find sometimes challenging with people I work with is that they're unwilling. People who are having chronic issues around here, they're unwilling to look at those things. They're not yet ready to look at those things, and they're kind of invested in the issue still being there. Um, But there is great freedom for you, and it's very easy to find as long as we're willing to, to do that inner reflective work that's part of our process. So um, I want you to just all take a deep breath. We're winding down here, finally, right? We're winding down here with this video. I know it's been very long. If you missed some of it, um, it will be posted so that you can watch it all um, at some time in the future. There's a lot of good information here that's worth reflecting on in your path about this issue, but also about everything. The spiritual path is, in many ways, very simple, but in other ways, it's not always easy to know ourselves and to surrender and to let go in such a way that we can be free. But once we're able to do that, once we're willing, and once we continue to practice in ways that empower us, um, we can truly experience life at uh, so much higher level, so much more joy, so much more peace, so much more balance. And I really wish that for each of you. Um, Feel free to be in touch. Again, you can comment below this video. Or you can go to my website and send me an email if you'd like, if there's anything I can do for you. Remember that there are layers to this work that will happen over the course of time. And I just highly, highly recommend for each of you to get into a a program of some kind of regularly resolving what's coming up in your subconscious. It has to be done with layers over the course of time, much like any kind of therapeutic or counseling process. Come Things come up in layers to be resolved. As you invest in yourself in that level and commit to your spiritual practice, you will begin to feel greater and greater freedom, joy, and like you're not fixing the problems. You're not finding a solution to a problem. The problems themselves begin to be seen as just limited perception in our consciousness. The problems begin to dissolve. You no longer have problems that you have to fix. You simply come to a higher level of awareness. The problems begin to dissolve. That's what happens with one power, one presence, one life. There's only spirit. There's nothing really to fight. There's no battle to fight. You don't have to fight health conditions. You don't have to fight entities. You don't have to fight discordant conditions. You just have to come back into that higher consciousness, that realm of spirit. As you do, you begin to bring that higher level into the situation and the problems begin to get dissolved. So friends, thank you so much for joining me in today's video. Um, Again, I'm going to wind it up now. If there are additional comments on this video, I'll respond to you in written form later. So friends, thank you so much for watching. I hope this has been valuable for you educationally and also valuable for you in terms of energetic process going on. 
Um, it's been a pleasure sharing with you. Till next time, friends. Peace and blessings.